Hi, I'm John Corvino. Like most Americans, I was taught that the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower in search of religious liberty. That's part of the story. The pilgrims, and later the Puritans, did come here to escape religious persecution, only then to turn around and practice their own brand of religious persecution. They committed what Professor Douglas Laycock has referred to as the Puritan mistake, the idea that religious liberty means liberty for everyone to do things my way. Many so-called religious liberty measures today commit the same mistake. They dress themselves up in the language of religious freedom, but they're really just a way of preserving a kind of religious privilege. Take the recent wave of First Amendment Defense Acts, or FADAs. Mississippi's FADA is an example. It was entitled the Protecting Freedom of Conscience from Government Discrimination Act. Well, that sounds nice, but the law actually protected only three beliefs. The belief that marriage is between one man and one woman, that sexual relations are properly reserved to such marriage, and that male and female refer to one's immutable biological sex at birth. It was written in such a way that anyone acting on such beliefs could deny other people legal rights with impunity. And it applied not only to private individuals, but also to for-profit businesses and even government workers. So government clerks could refuse to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. They could refuse to handle their joint tax returns, spousal pension benefits, insurance benefits, survivor benefits, and so on. And by including the belief that sexual relations are properly reserved to marriage, the law even licensed discrimination against unwed parents. Now, people who defend FADAs say that they're not about licensing discrimination, they're about protecting freedom. But when they say this, it's kind of like when people say they ate all the ice cream in order to make room in the freezer. Nobody believes that's what's really going on. The problem here is the double standard. The law protects certain conservative Christian beliefs about marriage while offering no corresponding protection for liberal beliefs about marriage. And who do you think needs that protection more in Mississippi? Remember, Mississippi is a state where you can be fired just for being lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. It's a state that vehemently opposed equal marriage rights for same-sex couples and where many people still believe that gay sex should be against the law. Mississippi's FADA, fortunately, was struck down as unconstitutional on both equal protection and establishment clause grounds. As Judge Carlton Reeves wrote in the decision, the state has put its thumb on the scale to favor some religious beliefs over others. Showing such favor tells non-adherents that they are outsiders, not full members of the political community. Yet his ruling hasn't prevented people from trying to pass FADAs in other states, and even at the federal level. The saddest thing about these First Amendment Defense Acts is that they betray not only the spirit of the First Amendment, but also this country's great legacy of religious liberty. That has traditionally been a legacy of inclusion. FADAs, by contrast, are about signaling disapproval for certain ways of life. Their proponents demand freedom for themselves that they proudly oppose for LGBT citizens. The freedom to marry, the freedom to express their beliefs about marriage, the freedom to enter the public square without fear of discrimination. It's liberty for me, not liberty for thee. In short, it's the Puritan mistake. Honey?